Hey, good morning, everyone. Marty Missouri here. It's Wednesday, the 19th of April, 2023, with your midweek stock market snapshot. There is a fair amount that I think is worth sharing with you this morning. The S&P 500 has something for everybody, meaning there's there's a look here that the bulls would like. We have uh, what looks to me like a nice you know, continuation of a bull flag pattern or another bull flag pattern right here that would take us right up to this probably pretty stiff resistance, the last August high. The MACD is still on a buy signal, although it's slowing down a little bit. You're not quite overbought here on the RSI. Your 20-day moving average has moved above the 50-day. The moving averages are all you know, pointing in the right direction, more or less. So yeah, you want to be bullish? Absolutely, unequivocally. I get it. I understand it. The bears, on the other hand, say, you know, this is looking more like a rising wedge pattern right in here. Very bearish, high probability pattern, particularly when you do not match that on key momentum indicators like the MACD and the RSI. This continues to roll over. You're going to get your sell signal there, likely would coincide with a break below the wedge pattern. That would be a signal to short or to get out of the market if you're a short-term trader. We lean toward the latter, as regular viewers and clients know, generally because of general conditions. Our work on general conditions, on the economy, on global macro, what have you, says that a recession is very likely, we think, in the second half of 2023. And our view, and it's the view among others as well, is that stock valuations do not reflect the kind of earnings action that would occur in a recession. And that's kind of your second leg down scenario, or that is your second leg down scenario for bear markets that occur during recessions. I'll get a little bit more into that here in a second. QQQ, the ETF that tracks the NASDAQ 100 index. Again, the way we look at the world, technically this is about as bearish as it gets. You've got your rising wedge pattern, you have your bearish divergences, you have you know, a nascent sell signal right in here. We'll see if that plays out, but yes, the red line is above the white line. Coming off of eh, basically overbought conditions right in here. Again, uh, does not look unlike the situation that prevailed here in the at, during the August high. One thing that I forgot I want to go back here and touch on is on the daily on the S&P 500 is the Fibonacci retracements. I'm going to go back to the beginning of the bear market that we're currently in. And these are technically significant, if only because technicians work on these or, or give these levels huge respect. And so from a retracement standpoint, you, you go with the top of the market, all time high, you go down to the bear market low to date, and typically the market will stair step and retrace its way out of it or retrace and then fail its way through it while the bear market is still on. 50% is very, very key. A lot of traders will put their sell orders right there at that 50% retracement and take a look. So here we, here we have our 3,500 bottom. Here we go up just below the 50% retracement. Actually, the three keys are highlighted here on Bloomberg's software, the 38, 50, and 61.8. So, um, but look at how key, we came back up here, bumped it, bumped it, bumped it against the 50, came back down to this 24% um, retracement level. And then here we are once again, just pounding our head against the 50. Now you could argue that the more you pound against that, you'll weaken that and you could break through that 100%, I would agree. And we would be bullish, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. If our assessment of general conditions was bullish, it's not. Therefore, um, our view is that we absolutely unequivocally could come back to the 61.8, not at all out of the norm. In fact, it's pretty much the norm for a bear market to retrace 62% of the fall. Now a retracement to 62% would take us right back to that August resistance. Like I said the other day, if I were trading this aggressively short term, 
I would, all things being equal, as we see it here today, nothing else changes other than the price chart. Oh my, that would be a short seller's spot to go in and back up the truck. I don't know that we're going to get there. The bull pattern says we're going to. We'll see. We absolutely, we could. It's earnings season and earnings seasons and Fed meetings are the kinds of uh, scenarios that make for counter trend moves. Looking at the, again, at the cues, really bearish look to us. Uh, here we have this range in here. You could argue, hey, we're bouncing our head. We're weakening the ceiling. You could also argue that we're weakening the floor and that the floor is going to give way at some point in the not too distant future. I've talked a lot about the dollar of late. It's a key component to our equity market conditions index. And if the dollar goes higher, we think stocks probably go lower the way they've been trading of late. Um, you know, as the market has rallied here in 2023, it rallied as the, as the dollar came down. It sold off in February as the dollar rose. It rallied in March as the dollar came down. You can see from our technical work here, we have just the beginning of a buy signal there on the dollar, maybe breaking above this, bear, this bullish falling wedge, and the RSI is coming off of oversold territory. Uh, we're bearish the dollar on a, on a protracted long-term basis. Technically, we're kind of bullish the dollar right here, and that could be problematic for stocks and commodities. Speaking of commodities, gold's maybe more of a currency, but anyway, speaking of gold, uh, we remember we were really bearish in here. I think our first wedge that we were looking at was, was right in here. In fact, I know it was, and we talked about the setup. We did break down, but we came right back out of it. Now it's just kind of extending itself breaking down again below that here of late. And we do have it rolling over. We do have a sell signal here. We're long-term bulls gold, short-term, technically speaking. When we're not adjusting our position, by the way, because of this, but I just wanted to give you a heads up that gold looks a little bit precarious to me right here. And that is not the consensus from other people who I listen to. Uh, it, seems like, it seems like there is right now, as we speak here today, quite a bit of bullishness on the precious metals. The VIX is approaching the bear market low, or it's approaching the level right where the stock market peaked at its all-time high. And remember, we did this analysis where every time it dropped below 20 during the bear market up to a point, it, it coincided with a test of the bear market trend line and then a failure below it test. So just pretty consistent until it broke out. This should have the bulls feeling really good, right? You broke out. Yes, we got a spike in the VIX. We came down and we tested the top of the trend line, bounced off of it, tested it again, came below it, but then bounced off of it with, uh, with some force to the upside. So that's, you know, that's bullish. And there's a pretty wide gap between here and there. We just think it, as I said the other day, the higher this goes, if general conditions continue to score the way we see them, the harder it's going to fall. Now, <clears throat> what it, the, the point here is that the VIX is really getting low relative to where it's been over the last year or so. That, you might say, represents some complacency in the market. And complacency in a bear market with general conditions as we see them is a very dangerous word to put it lightly. Now, I've listened to Bloomberg television this morning in the background, and it was interesting because two or three, two in particular, were just pretty much raging bulls. And it was interesting because their raging bullishness was somewhat predicated on what they say is raging bearishness out there. They mentioned the IMF meeting recently and short interest in the S&P 500, so where institutional investors are perhaps, where futures traders are, um, where the big policymakers in the world think things are and so forth. And they just said, you know, the market is poised to ramp higher because everybody's so negative, and when the world shows them that they should be positive, then we're off to the races. Ironically, the the of the two, the most the one who was the most bullish, I've heard him many many times, and he seems to be always bullish. But that's okay. Uh, he says the bond market has it wrong, and the stock market has it right, which is interesting to hear a, a market actor 
who's respected say it that way, but that's okay. So at sometimes that could be the case. And the other thing I just want to mention is that my own observation is it seems like as I listen to the bears and, you know, both people I know and, you know, people who I listen to via various media, it's, there seems to be a little frustration. If you listen to the bears, you'd think the stock market's at record highs. And that just speaks to human nature and, and the propensity to identify with our theses. And we have to be careful not to do that. Um, the reality of it is that the market is still down 10 plus percent to S&P. The Nasdaq's still down like 17 percent since the bull market top, which was this place back here. Right. And over the last year plus, market's gone absolutely nowhere. Here we were in February of 2022, and here we are today, just coming above that. So, uh, you know, I don't think either side has much to celebrate at this point. What that, you know, obviously looks like to me is one huge consolidation pattern. So uh, the market is just bouncing around within this range. Now, again, if I were bullish on general conditions, I would say, like we were saying after that long two-year consolidation 2016, we think the break looks obviously to us or conditions to us say the break is going to be to the upside. Right now, as we sit here today, and I'm not wedded to this, we as a firm aren't wedded to this. We're just doing the work and saying the risk reward says that all likelihood before this is over will break to the downside. And we are absolutely unequivocally willing and happy to change that narrative once conditions tell us that's the wrong narrative. Okay, I need to wrap this up. So let's look at quickly non-commercial futures traders, so future speculators in the S&P 500 E-mini futures contracts. So one thing that like the bullish guy on one of the bullish people on Bloomberg said this morning is that we look at how short the futures traders are. That is so bullish because they're wrong and they're going to have to cover. And I've I brought this up many, many times, and I think it's very important. And this is actually part of our sentiment index, the one that we put together. But what I wanted to show here is for about as far as I can go back, that's meaningful. Um, yeah, I get it. Um, and that could absolutely lead to a spike to the upside in the market. The problem is sometimes, sometimes the crowd gets it right. And typically when it gets it right is during recession. So here in 2007, we actually had even lower or even higher net short interest, I should say. And you'd think you'd want to buy that with both fists because the potential for short covering, well, notice that, of course, the market just rolled over hard from there, right? In here, we were getting weak. This is the European debt crisis. So while we ultimately did bounce fairly strong off of that, while it was going on, there was still you know, a, a prolonged period of weakness in here. Right in here, huge bearishness, and you know we ended up with a 16% decline. So sometimes the bears get it right, and sometimes the bulls get it right. So when we have too much you know, to the upside in terms of net long exposures, everybody says, oh boy, that's a contrarian indicator. Yeah, it can be, but nothing is the be all, end all 100% of the time. So my point here, like with COVID, you know, huge short interest, but we know that the powers that be just were not going to allow this to stick. So trillions of dollars came in, came into the the markets, came into the economy, and it on paper it fixed it. Of course, it also exacerbated what we thought was the beginning of a structurally higher inflation regime. Anyway, and that's problematic if the conditions in here get sour in terms of how much stimulus they're willing to bring to bear. I think it'll be a lot if things get really sour, but I think it brings inflation right back in force. So tough position if you're a central bank policymaker. Lastly, this is something that I've been looking at weekly for years. It's the it's a technical indicator. It's called Bollinger Bands. The gray line in the middle is the 20 period moving average. The purple is two standard deviations below. The green is two standard deviations, I'm sorry, two standard deviations above. The green is two standard deviations below. 
And this is a slow moving, kind of a long term trend indicator, maybe. And I just wanted to show you this is a 50, no, a 60 year chart. This is monthly. So this is the 20 month moving average, two standard deviations above or below. The price is the bar chart. So you can see back here in the early 70s, we had a recession. We had the price drop below, test it, and that gray line there, the key is there, I want you to take a look at the gray line and what happens when it tends to roll over, okay? So the first leg of this decline was about an 18%. And then from the point where the right when the gray line peaked and rolled over, uh, from that point lower, we ended up with another 18% decline, 36% in all. Right in here, a notable decline in the market came back, testing that 20 month moving average, not beating it. Then it rolled over. We ended up with a 48% decline in that 73, 74 bear market. And then here in the 80s, in the early 80s recession and bear market, came down, broke it, tested it, ended up with a 27% decline. And then no rolling over the 20 month moving average, even though we had a, a small recession in there. And then we got in here to the early 2000s in the tech bubble. So the first leg lower was 20, call it 28%. Came back, tried to test that 20 month moving average. And then it rolled over. The rest of the leg down there took the market down. Oh, another 22% plus to our 50% decline in the S&P 500. Here's a great financial crisis. First leg lower was uh, just about 23%. Then the 20 month moving average rolled over. Stocks tanked 58% before it was all said and done. Here we had a 20% you know, decline. Here we had that tough period from 2014 to 2016, but the gray line never rolled over. Of course, in COVID, they weren't gonna let that happen. Here we are today, folks, and let me zoom in for you. So here we are today, um, broke down below the 20 month moving average. We saw a 27.5% decline. Testing, testing, stubbornly testing that 20 month moving average. This is what concerns me here is it looks like this thing is rolled over. And I just showed you in the past when that thing is finally rolled over, right? With price below is when you get your next leg down. Now, one thing you don't see here that you saw in those other instances is the recession bar, right? So originally I keep saying this every time we pegged 3,500 as the bear market bottom. We, we got there, bounced right off of it the same day and haven't looked back. But we said it was our bear market bottom if there's no recession. Now we think recession's coming. And I just showed you during past recessions how this looks, right? So we have high recession risk and we have a Bollinger Band on the monthly chart that is suggesting that odds are favoring that from a technical look at these long-term charts. Folks, none of this has to play out the way it has historically. The technicals do offer up, you know, patterns that we can recognize and then we can test them against other periods in history, other regimes, other general conditions. And we can say when things line up this sort of way historically, what's the risk reward look like? So again, as I keep pounding the table, the risk reward right here does not look great to us. Uh, it's not that we can't make money in this environment, but like I tell clients at every reviews, we had a, we've had a really nice start to the year. Don't go spending the money, right? Because if we're right, markets have another leg down. We will not be immune to that. We will continue to hedge with options so that we can't get devastated if it breaks very hard. But there's some stuff we need to ride through. We've, we've backed off of some of the positions we like long term so we can add them back if we're right. But in the meantime, we can still make money in this environment if we're wrong. Went longer than I expected to. Thank you for hanging in there. Have a great rest of the day and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.